and I, I had to use my phone as it turns out so that's okay yeah it's way better um i'm just gonna cut out everything else because I, I the audio is so bad um sorry about all that <laughs> that's all right cool um, so this is another episode of the Sap Powers podcast. I've already said this, but we have bad audio uh, with Melanie Crawford. Oh, clap again! Yay! I didn't clap this time, but that's okay. Yeah, it's all right. I'm still, still trying to find my comfy spot. Okay. <laughs> all right. Cool. Um, we could talk about different stuff. We don't have to talk about all that again. Even though that ghost story was super interesting. It was crazy. It's like nothing I've ever heard. Uh, mostly like when people tell ghost stories, it's like they'll see like a dark figure or something. I never like heard of something oh. like so um like I, I, you... I, I've, I've even witnessed one that you can Google. You can even go and try and see it for yourself. I've witnessed the, the headless uh, motorcycle guy at uh, in Perry Sound. Oh, shit. That's a thing. Yeah, Damn. totally. Yeah, it's an old road where uh, somebody died uh racing their motorbike and um and his his ghost has been seen so basically how it appears is like uh, uh, you'll see a headlight but there'll be and then the headlight will go away and there's nothing and then in front of you there's a tail light and i've seen that twice now hmm. that's crazy so like yeah. where, where you saw it, it's like in a certain spot that you that you see it yeah everyone sees yeah it I'm, there? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Old Skugog Road. Yeah, like it's if it's like part of Ontario's ghost hunting like archives and stuff. Hmm. Yeah. So like have you have you like been on any like ghost hunting like kind of things? Like do you go all over the place kind of looking for this stuff? Yeah, you know, or? None that are none that are really organized, but I've always been intrigued. And when like I said, when I was a kid, we would observe tons of um abandoned places the other creepiest thing that i ever seen similar to the the baby story that i told you was um uh this abandoned house that we went in my dad and i stepped into it and it was just a like just a wreck like, it was just out in a field and it was just typical abandoned stuff right um but it stunk like hard really smelled bad and um we ended up finding like a dead cat a freshly dead cat which is not really creepy or whatnot but Again, in the upstairs of this house, uh, we found one room that was pristine. The rest of the house is like condemnable. Mm -hmm. And we find this one room that's pristine and it's floor to ceiling pine, like a pine floor, but it was the same thing, walls, ceiling, like the whole, it was like a fucking pine room, shiny, just varnished type of thing. And um, we went out and said, to, my stepmother wouldn't step foot in the place because it smelled so bad. And we said to her, you, you got to see this. So like, you have to see this. It's impossible. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we went back up there, same thing, it, the, the pristine pine room was gone and it was a dirty room with a filthy, like stained mattress in the middle of the floor. And my dad and I were just like, we know we saw it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like crazy, crazy that stuff. scared the shit out of me. If I experienced anything like that ever, like, I don't even know how I'd react. It would like blow my world up. Right. It's just like, Hey, mm -hmm. well, it's, yeah, what do you even grasp onto, right? What do you what do you believe? What do you think? What are you supposed to even think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. Um, what about aliens? You got any, what are your thoughts on those? I don't know where to make the di I don't know how to decipher like what the big difference, right? Like my boyfriend's huge. He believes there's aliens. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, man. Like, I would have to say, if I if I were to say anything that I believed anything about aliens, I think I might be one of them. Like, I do not fucking belong here. I don't <laughs> think I'm fucking from here, right? I, I, I like, you know, I, I've never been so out of place in my whole life except for on fucking Earth, right? Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. It's hard to say. I believe in a lot of things that are unbelievable. I just don't know enough and haven't had enough experience to have a true opinion on aliens, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you watch like uh like anything on YouTube at all or stuff like that? Um, no, uh I'm a mom of like three young kids, so most of my mm -hmm. YouTube watching is like stupid, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh Robo Block or whatever the shit that is. So no, not mm -hmm. too much. Yeah. I watch Aussie Man reviews on YouTube. That's about my that's about my commitment to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that guy. He is hilarious. I so love funny. that guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, he makes me laugh. Like I literally will go look him up if I'm having a bad day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, his shit's funny. Have you ever thought about like starting your own YouTube channel or anything like that? Yep. 
actually, uh, it's funny you would ask because um, I've been getting kind of bored. Like I had already eased up uh, in comedy before the quarantine shit started happening. Um, and I mean, I love the corporate stuff and it's great money. But the truth is the whole reason I ever pulled out of it uh, was because I wanted just to enjoy like a, a more um, everyday audience, right? Like the kind of people that go to bars and restaurants and that they're fun to make laugh, right? Um, so that's why I pulled out of it. So, so my new angle now that I'm thinking of doing is trying to combine all that I do, which is like, you know, raise kids and, you know, do motivational speaking. And I like to be an entrepreneur. I like, I'm a, technically officially retired for the last six years from traditional employment. So I like to do a lot of projects and stuff, but, um, my new thing is to start a cooking and comedy. So I am going to do uh, clean cooking with dirty comedy and 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 start a youtube channel and and start running with that yeah i like that that's good that's a good title too clean cooking with dirty comedy yeah Yeah. and it's 100 percent true right and because i thought of a bunch of ideas like i was uh recently i was just uh, going through you know i was doing an online course to get my food handlers and i was going to start a little side hustle with my daughter and and do stuff in a community kitchen and then I thought you know I don't even want to be responsible for people eating what I make or have to worry about food safety and that's not even my up my alley I mean it's there's a lot of things I can do but I only enjoy a handful of them right so Mm -hmm. this is way better and this is something I can do at home only me and my people are going to eat whatever I've cooked I don't have to you know watch my mouth you don't like it tune the fuck out right (laughs) Mm-hmm. If I want to pull a piece of bacon out of my tits and slam it on a burger, I'm going to fucking do it, right? <laughs> no? I'm sure you get tons of subscribers for that. <laughs> you can get blow up on YouTube. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before, like, cause, and then because there, I wanted the opportunity to make a bit of money, I am also going to be selling um, some of those clean eating products. Like, they're one of those uh, home party businesses, right? Epicure. And it's just mm-hmm. a way to make a little bit of money for my time or not or whatever it, it either way but um i really believe it's just a matter of time before they relieve me of my representational duties for their company <laughs> we're gonna take some bets to see how many episodes it takes before they don't want me saying their name <laughs> oh mm-hmm. shit what do you what do you think about like everything that's going on in the world right now like with the whole coronavirus and all that shit <sighs> Well, I tend to be a, a believer in um, mass pop propaganda, and I'm always hesitant to uh, take in what I hear in the news. So I think whatever is happening is not what we're being told. And, you know, without just spouting my opinion, which I'm hesitant to do also, I, I just have to say, again, I'm not educated enough to really to say I, I, I won't wear well I won't wear a mask like if I have to wear a mask to go somewhere I will adjust my life and not have to go to that place and I won't fight about it and I won't bitch about it I'm not going to be that you know I'm not going to ask to fucking talk to a manager but I will I'm committed to adjusting my life the best I can before I conform to those those kind of things that's my personal feeling for me and my my kids and shit right like obviously if I'm going to go visit somebody who's sick or if I you know I just, I just think that everything's blown out of proportion and the inconsistencies are way too fucking big to add up in my mind. And as an algorithmic thinker, I can't even comprehend half the shit that's going on because it doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. And if it doesn't add up, I, I just don't think about it. Right. I've yeah, enjoyed I, the I, though. <laughs> yeah. I don't really like do enough, uh, research i'm not smart enough i'm just like another idiot so yeah i kind of just like go with the flow with everything i'm like all right quarantine all right i'll just not go anywhere right Mm -hmm. Right. and and when i go out now first thing i do is i like yeah i'll read whatever's on your fucking door what you know i'll read the instructions but as soon as i go somewhere i just ask i just learned to ask because some places they automatically um assume that you know their protocol that's what i'm finding hard right Mm -hmm. so you just get the fucking death stare but you know i i got 14 other things on my fucking mind i didn't know i had to follow arrows at the goddamn dollarama right like i just wish people would calm the fuck down (laughs) like you know (laughs) yeah when i was like i go to the store and buy cigarettes or whatever it's like people just there are like 
those arrows on the ground but like when you're coming in as someone's going out or whatever you always walk close like people are walking past you and stuff but it seems like no one really cares that much anyways no, anymore it, it, at least uh, yeah some are very very cautious and others mm -hmm. aren't at all and you know yeah I've, I've always fallen somewhere in the middle there and mm -hmm. it, it's been it, it's for me you have to understand too like i got tons of kids i got shit going on at home so mm -hmm. it's not a huge lifestyle change for me right not right. being able to go out drink has been a big one i've been quarantined with my ex-husband and my boyfriend and the three kids mm -hmm. and the dog and the two cats and the three guinea pigs oh my god so it, <laughs> yeah. that's been interesting mm -hmm. and i've learned to even make jokes out of that like I, I i tease people like my one friend yesterday said uh oh my husband's finally going back to work tomorrow you know thank god she says and mm -hmm. I told her, well, b both of my husbands are still working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? So, mm -hmm. luckily, uh, life provided me with enough distractions that the, the world hasn't, hasn't uh, poisoned my, my joyful soul just yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, when comedy starts, like, happening again, are you going to do shows, do you think? Yeah, I, I have a handful of, uh, you know, contacts and people that I – will literally always always work with and mm -hmm. or for or you know um but beyond that i'm not pursuing much other than my you know my own shows uh i had a show that i was touring um with my ex-husband called the x files right and it was a comedy show just talking about separating a marriage but still co-parenting um so there's always opportunity for me to tour again with that but for the you know for the average uh uh bar gig i'm definitely not getting back into that scene and and i and you know not into the competitions either i mean i'm banned for, i can't even apply to the competition here in Bradford. i'm not even allowed to submit an application what, <laughs> what, what am i allowed to know what happened oh, holy fuck me they hate me man i <laughs> the first year the first year i i i I, uh, I was in the contest i had uh a personal um problem we'll say with the host cliff cliff myers who everybody loves and of course they love him man he's a great comedian right but he's a human too right and we had a little mm -hmm. personal issue and it all got worked out and then the the next year um the audience did not agree with who won and it went on facebook and i basically took the heat for the fact that a whole bunch of fucking people said Oh, that girl shouldn't have won. Melanie should have won. And Jamie Stevens already hated me, right? Like, I just, I rub people the wrong way, dude. Like, mm -hmm. fucking hard, right? And yeah, I got told, don't apply again. I'm the, f so I made myself an award. I got first place for being banned from the fucking contest. I win. <laughs> Wait, so he banned you because other people said you should have won? That seems odd. Oh, he banned me because he's he's he says all I cause is drama, and I'm not interested in the competition. I'm only interested in the drama, and uh, it's just it's too hard to deal with me, essentially. Hmm. And then he told everybody in Brantford to don't do business with me. So even last, like I I tried to buy tickets to a fundraiser for a guy that had a record store here in Brantford, right? They're hmm. throwing him a fundraising party, it's like live bands. Tickets are fifteen bucks a person, and so I go to buy a ticket. They won't even sell me a ticket. I can't even buy a fucking fundraising ticket in this city until they have a meeting with the people that run the place because Jamie sponsored that show and gets the final say on whether or not I'm allowed to have a, to buy a ticket and go. That's crazy. That sounds yeah. like drama to me. <laughs> you know, like a... Right? So the only way I was allowed to go, I was allowed, I was allowed to buy a ticket and I was allowed to go, but I had to agree that I, I wouldn't say or do anything like, basically i had to like you know just behave quietly isn't it fucking retarded like i just laugh it's ridiculous it this is the stupidest town ever it's it's yeah. ridiculous it'd be interesting to hear his side of the story of why <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah i i like i literally frustrate the shit out of him like to the point that i'm not even allowed to to like ask for a spot that's it well there's other cities you don't have to do Brantford, right Oh, fuck yeah. It's never even been my goal, though, to be honest, right? Like, uh, I, yeah, it's, it would be fun and it'd be a lot easier to get some bigger and better comedy gigs if I had some wins and shit like that behind me. But 
I'm not willing to to do that because it's never it's not my goal to get signed by Yuck Yucks or mm-hmm. it's those aren't my goals, right? Uh, so I I just learned to take that shit and stride and fuck it, right? There's many many ways to get in front of an audience, and and like I said, I got a handful of people that I can that I you know that I work well with and that I respect. Um, and that's it for me. I'm happy with that. You know, my yeah, kids, plus my, my kids are like eight, nine and 10 and they require me a lot right now. Right. Like they, they're, mm-hmm. they're at those, they're at those ages where they have to learn to problem solve. Like we've, we've figured out the wiping your ass part and now it's the real fucking human stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I kind of, I kind of got to be around for that. And, uh, and then I've got some plans in the next, you know, five to seven years as they, get their own shit together and I can really fucking hit people where I need to and want to. Right. Mm-hmm. And the Brantford comedy festival would just be a distant fucking memory. I didn't even know they had a comedy festival. Perfect. Um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> of course you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, only, the only shows I've, I've done in, Br- in, Br- in Brantford, I think uh, were your show at MV and I did uh Amsterdam and then Star- Starving Artist is there too, right? Used to be, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was actually a really good little spot. Mm-hmm. Envy was awesome. Envy was good days. I had I had a great run at Envy. That was a lot of fun. Were you there when we had the big stage, or was it just the little bar side? Uh, the big stage, I think. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Envy was a lot of fun. Again, uh, always that struggle of trying to get people to come out, and you know, but it was probably probably some of the best shows I did and before that like uh I used to do a show every week at um another place in town that was it was awesome I mean uh, I probably was one of the first people to get paid for an amateur show here in town so the creamery would uh they paid me 200 bucks every Wednesday night to host a show and I was able to make that money back for them right and that's for comedy on a Wednesday night that's impressive in a city like Brantford Right. I mean, that gives yeah. me money. I, I was able to pay everybody, even if you were it was your first time on stage. I mean, everybody got at least uh, gas money, you know. Yeah, that's and awesome. It, and I'm sure they appreciate that. Well, I hope so. They, mm-hmm. But that's what they are worth. I mean, it's nice to be given a beer or something, but cash mm-hmm. is different. Even if it's a small amount, I've, I've literally handed people something as small as five dollars and they've been like, oh, man, you, really? Are you sure? Like, thank you. And It's like, yeah, I'm sure. Like. So, yeah, you're I, you actually know, one of the very few people that have paid me to do comedy. Now that I think about right. it, yeah. But that's Which I am grateful right? for it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> absolutely. You're absolutely welcome. I think it's important. And those are the kind of things that I look forward to in my future, too, right? Is being able to promote more of that and uh, do the kind of shows that I think need to be done and, and treat people the way, like, I, I could go out there right now and tell you all kinds of shit that I think and feel about the comedy industry, but um, yeah. I, I'm not going to because I'm not trying to make the change either right now, right? But one day I do hope to do that. I, you know, it's it's definitely my goal to provide opportunity that I didn't see being provided when I was out there getting bullied, essentially, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I want to change that, and so the time will come, right? But I, I can't pipe up right now, like I said, because I'm doing absolutely fuck all to make the difference. So I can't really back my words yet. So just wait. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I don't really like that. Like the headliner and the host are usually like the only ones that get paid and everyone else does it for free. Even like five, ten bucks, at least like something I feel like um, just like the openers and shit should get. I agree. I I absolutely agree because, and it should be cash. Like it's, Mm -hmm. and that's honestly, I'm grateful for getting a free drink or getting, getting anything for free, but I, it's definitely something there's difference to it. And you know what I found too, is being one of the only people being one of the people that did pay everybody. um, I got better people. I got better performances. I got Mm -hmm. better shows. Right. Right. And like, um, just knowing that you're going to get paid at the end or whatever, it's like, you're not just going to go up there and do like work on your shittiest jokes or whatever. You're going to be like, Oh, I'm getting paid for this. I'm going to make it worth their money. Right. So then that's right. Even if it's like 10 bucks, you're going to like give it a little something extra. Right. I think. 
Well, when you, I think when you're first starting out, it's not the amount of money. It is the recognition that what you're doing is worth compensation, mm. right? Right, it's, exactly. It's this, and compensation beyond a free drink or a fucking plate of nachos, right? Like, yeah, and it's like they don't have to pay them because like there's so many comedians, right? It's like there's no like comedians union or anything, right? So it's like, <laughs> oh, you want five bucks or whatever for doing five minutes, ten bucks? Like, well, fuck you, we'll find somebody else. You know, there's like a thousand comedians, right, in Ontario that are like do it for right. free, <laughs> and that's actually detrimental to us, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's detrimental to the people that are trying and it just it just makes the pond that much dirtier like that's what i enjoyed um back in like 98 when i went to yuck yucks is because like i said i you know now when somebody wants to be a comic you you have to hit you have to get into the bar scene and you have to you you have to kiss ass you have mm-hmm. to make friends with people whether you whether or not you fucking like them you you have to do what is expected of you and that's okay all right i'm okay with trying to get along with people that I don't like and, and I can get along with people I don't like and I can do things that are expected of me, but not for a fucking bar owner that's not even going to give me anything of benefit. When I when I did Yuck Yucks, first time I ever stood on fucking stage in my life was at Yuck Yucks. First time on stage mm-hmm. as a comic was a Yuck Yucks stage. And I'll tell you what, yeah, they were pricks, but they mattered. Those are the kind of pricks that I want telling me what I'm doing right or wrong. That's some fucking alcoholic that goes to a shitty job every day, hates 90% 90 of the rest of their fucking life, and and wants to claim to be my fucking mentor now? Like, Jesus Christ, I I can't believe the way it's changed, right? Like, Uh you, you, I got in trouble, like, like, uh, I did Yuck Yucks, one of the things I had a problem with 20 fucking years ago, and I still have a problem with it, is the light, respecting the goddamn light. I fucking suck at that, right? Uh-huh. And I got, oh man, did I get blasted for that? I first started Yuck Yucks. I remember leaving in fucking tears. But that shit sticks with me, right? And because those, are, like I said, their opinions matter. And now, you know, you have people acting like they're going to make or break your career and they're literally nobody. You know, they're nobodies. Yeah, I've never performed at Yuck Yucks. I would love to perform there. Um, and uh, yeah, it's like, and running, not running the light is a good lesson to learn, I think, early, right? <laughs> yeah, big time, big yeah. time, yeah. Yeah, it, it's a big lesson, like, and I still, to this day, like, I, I did Yuck Yucks uh, probably right before the quarantine, and, you know, I would say to you and anybody else, don't, uh, don't put, like, don't put getting on a Yuck Yuck stage in the limelight for yourself, because it's not what it used to be, like, I literally did Yuck Yucks. I'm pretty sure it was Burlington. I, I, I can't remember who was running it, but um, I was borderline devastated to realize that it was just like every other CD bar room. It just had the word Yuck Yucks on the outside, mm. but zero professionalism, zero. Like I actually saw them mistreat a fellow comic, but I fucking felt bad. Like I just was like this, I was so disappointed. Like. To me, I thought Yuck Yuck should be a step above. Like, it should be an accomplishment, Mm -hmm. you know, with all the other places that we go and all the other shit that we go through. But, and that's just my opinion, right? Take it or leave it. Yeah, I definitely think Yucks isn't what it used to be. Like, it used to be, like, legendary almost, you know? Yeah, and And some of them are, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, Kenny Robinson's still legendary, literally. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, and and so I even feel bad saying anything fucking bad about it, but... I'm not talking about Kenny's show or any Toronto venue, but I'm saying these ones out here are like just kind of a joke. And I, I can't remember who was running that room, but oh yeah, it was just embarrassing. It would be so much better for us if it was like it was in the old days and you actually had access to re- real people. Like I had been in comedy for less than two months back in 98 and I met the producers of Seinfeld. Like, Oh shit. <laughs> that's crazy. Right. Right. Damn. You know, I've been uh-huh. back in comedy now for five years and like, it's just not the same. Right. Huh. Is there anything like you wish that you did differently um, with comedy? Yeah. Uh, not left. I wish I, I, I wish I hadn't have, um, I wish I worked harder to keep it going. 
you know, mm-hmm. throughout my years of recovery from the accident and early, early parenting years. So I wish I had not left. And then the other thing that I, I, I wish I had done is uh, um, properly branded myself sooner, right? It took me a couple of years of getting shit on and just run through the bullshit before I just, you know, figured out how to brand myself and own what I do. And I would definitely, I would definitely work on that harder if I had it to do over again, for sure. But then again, right, I branded myself as, as relentless and a motivational comedian. And I probably wouldn't have figured out I was relentless if I hadn't have faced all the shit storms I did. So yeah, eh, what came first, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you had your own podcast, what, what would it be about, you think? Uh, probably food and sex and <laughs> and yeah like pro- actually, at the same time or separated actually and i'm gonna take that back not just food and sex i think my i would have a podcast about how to make anything erotic that's very fun can we get an example <laughs> well have you seen me with a corn cob <laughs> <laughs> I just I find that fun. I like you know turning the uh, the appropriate into the inappropriate, and you know um, you know for example like the cooking and the clean cooking and dirty comedy. Like I, yeah. I you won't believe the number of stuffed mushroom recipes and filth, the filth that I have <laughs> for stuffed mushrooms. It's just it's gonna be awesome, right? I'm excited. I definitely think you should do that, uh, and yeah. then I can link your channel in the description. Yeah, I, uh, I'm excited for it too. Um, I just kind of came up with it. I've been mulling over a bunch of ideas and, and I birthed that idea a couple of weeks ago. And the fun thing for me too is that I can have guests. Um, I love to feature my boyfriend in the kitchen uh, with me because he's Australian, so he's got the accent. And he's also, there's a significant height difference between us. So we're just fun to look at, right? Like I'm 5'8 I'm, uh, eight and he's 5'3 <laughs> and <laughs> he's tiny and I'm, untiny and we're fucking hilarious together so i'm very excited to get him on there um and then i even have friends that run like actual businesses so i'm looking to provide entrepreneurial opportunity for people whose businesses can survive you know filthy fucking comedy you know what i mean like Uh not every business wants to be associated with the smack talk and you know person right most probably don't (laughs) yeah so you know it's a it's a small niche market but it's out there right Mm -hmm. it's out there for sure. So, yeah. yeah. I've actually got a ton of ideas for podcasts. I just don't have the discipline to pull them off, right? Like parenting, relationships, masturbation. <laughs> I could I could literally run an entire podcast and have like monthly, weekly, maybe even daily episodes on what not to put in your vagina. <laughs> Real life experience. <laughs> starting with irish spring this is what i learned okay <laughs> irish spring if inserted turns into irish sting pretty much fucking if i had the discipline i'm telling you i would have a podcast or or eight but i just don't have the discipline right now yeah you got a lot going on. My life's like the opposite of yours. I got no kids. I just chill, do nothing all day. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> well, I, I didn't I, I didn't say I didn't chill and do nothing all day, I, but I just mm. said I had a lot of kids. <laughs> yeah. I've, been make, I've been making my own wine. So Nice. Um, yeah. Like, fuck me. There is nothing quite as exciting as picking up 30 bottles of wine all at once. They're mm-hmm. all for you too. Like that's the best in the world, right? I wish homemade beer tasted better, but I haven't quite found the. Because I'm a beer girl, but yeah, I'll be a wine girl for three dollars a bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how cheap it is actually if you just get a shitload at once. That's what my parents yeah. do too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's pretty like fun. It. We can, we we got the pool out. The kids. The government gave us a bunch of money for the kids, so we bought them. Uh, tablets so they can go to school haven't seen the report cards yet but we'll see <laughs> yeah teach them how to cook 
this this time must be super weird for kids right now you know like when we were kids we never had to deal with any yeah. sort of crazy lockdown like this um i wonder how it's gonna like affect no. like they'll, they'll never forget this moment in their lives i feel like remember when we couldn't go anywhere <laughs> yeah yeah it is and i'm i'm really glad because like i have uh four kids but my oldest is 21 and then the other ones are eight nine and ten so um he was an only child for all intents and purposes and these three have each other so they're not mm -hmm. crying over having friends or this or that and i feel bad for kids that don't have siblings because man like or for single moms that like i just i'm fucking lucky right i literally have there's three adults and three kids in the house and like mm -hmm. You know, and and all of a sudden we have everything delivered. Like we don't even have to grocery shop anymore, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna go back to grocery shopping. I'm gonna keep mm -hmm. getting shit delivered. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are leaning that way. I was talking to uh, Patrick Alexander a couple of weeks ago. He's another comedian. I don't know if you know him, but he was saying oh, that yeah. exact same thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the delivery and I can sneak it like because I it was a lot of people in the house right so I'll get like Wendy's or some shit delivered even mm -hmm. and I'll tell them right in the notes don't ring the bell I don't want my kids to know <laughs> <laughs> and I'll sneak sneaky, that shit right up yeah it's awesome or today uh, right I have groceries delivered and then once they're delivered you always forget something it's like you gotta run out to the store but it's like oh I just had another order delivered and I was like oh yeah I'll get milk and mayo and this shit this time <laughs> yeah. i love it it's pretty great i'm gonna start leaving out lemonade for the fucking delivery people i've had them lined up before outside the house oh my god that's hilarious yeah you got like the, the booze oh, getting delivered the, the groceries <laughs> without a lie i had i had uh the the zares like the grocery delivery just unloading and the car behind him was uh with a weed with a weed delivery and the car <laughs> behind him was shoppers drug mart with my actual medicine right <laughs> that's wow that's crazy i love it um <laughs> Yeah, this has been awesome. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Oh, yeah. I really had a great time. It's been good to chat with an adult. And Do you have, like, any <laughs> any plugs, anything you want people to follow well, you on? or mm -hmm. oh, I can link so everything I'm, in the description. Um, yeah. Um, rel uh, at Relentless Laughs on Facebook. That's my Facebook page. Okay. And uh, I forget... <laughs> I forget what my clean cooking uh dirty comedy page is but yeah it, it'll be connect it'll all be connected um and then just relentless melanie crawford um and my website is relentlessandcompany.com relentless i love it <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well it's either that or like i had two choices right i could either say relentless which is see my tattoo yeah, that's sick, actually. I love it. Yeah. It's better than victim. Yeah. Is that the other choice? Relentless or victim? Pretty much. That's your two choices. How are you going to live your life? You're going to keep fucking going or you're just going to stop and cry about it, right? Right, for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thanks again for doing this. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks. All right. And give me, give me a shout when it's going to be posted and uh, I'll... Uh, Make sure I give you a link to my clean cooking and dirty comedy. <laughs> All right, perfect. Thanks again, hon. All right, bye. Bye.